All right, hello everybody. Jake here, um, coming at you with the final school nurse practitioner boards licensing study resources video of um, my nurse practitioner school career. It has all come to an end finally um, as of today. I may be, as I'm recording this, you know, North Carolina's newest licensed family nurse practitioner. So, um, really exciting stuff. Um, I wanted to make this video for a long time. However, of course, I've been studying diligently for um, a while to pass my boards. So I want to go through all of that stuff and, um, you know, try to give you as much information as I can, um, and, but keep it sort of brief. Um, and then also, you know, talk about resources, studying, and then also, uh, even licensing. Cause there's a lot of things. And I know that varies state by state, but just to give you probably what, uh, a generalized outline of how most states work. Um, I hadn't seen a lot of videos that talked about that and it was, it's not extremely difficult or anything, but just to kind of give you a heads up. So let's start from the beginning, which occurred before graduation. Um, I'm sure you know this, but depending on your college, you can take your boards before you even graduate if your school does complete all of the required clinical hours prior to graduation. However, um, at least in North Carolina, the Board of Nursing still needs, and the license, and the AANP or uh, ANCC, both need your degree, uh, like uh, your transcript with degree conferred, so your actual degree. Um, and that, of course, can't happen until after you graduate. So um, technically, even if you took your boards before you graduate, you wouldn't even be able to um, continue on in the process until you graduated. So um, my program would not allow you the way it was designed. We didn't, you know, technically finish all our clinical hours until the semester was over and the grades were booked. And so essentially we all, you know, knew we had to wait till after graduation. Um, so anyway, I guess I'll start with where I started, how I started, all the resources I used. So Leek, um, I don't think I have it right here next to me. If I didn't already burn it, I'm just kidding. Uh, but the uh, Leek, I think it's Marina, Marina Codina Leek, I think is her full name. Um, the newest edition, fourth edition, of course, um, I honestly picked that up on Amazon, I think for somewhere from 40 to 60 bucks. I, it was a little more expensive. And then by the time I came back and looked it had dropped in price, uh, that was my only resource book. Um, I can't really imagine trying to bounce between resource books. I know people use, uh, Leek, Fitzgerald, APEA or APEA. Um, those are probably the most popular, uh, I don't know. I think my opinion, it's just an opinion. All of this, of course, is just opinion My in my experience, but I would just pick one and um, kind of stick to that. And so I honestly started studying six months prior to graduation, studying, okay? Now, when I say studying, I mean reviewing, reading, of course, <clears throat> just getting through the whole book one time and however you do that. I mean, you're, you know, you're a master's or doctorate level student. I hope you know how you study by now. If you don't, which you'd be surprised, I would honestly spend a week of time just to learn how you study most effectively, whether that's hearing things out loud, because to have a, a set plan of how to attack this book because it's a large book and it's tons of information. Um, but this is information that you are going to really, really need to know. You know how in school we kind of 
got to know things and then we did what we needed to do and then we moved on. Well, this is not the same. This book, right, the ultimate goal would be to completely memorize this book, if you could. I, I, it's not possible, but it's to get as much in there as you possibly can. So for me, I set out a six month plan, six months prior, so essentially kind of my last semester of school, um, spring semester, starting in January, starting in the new year, I just took little chunks every day. And what I did, um, because this is um, what is best for me, and it's what's scientifically been proven for memory, uh, for learning um, and retaining knowledge is um, spaced repetition and active recall. Um, what is that? That's essentially flashcards. Reviewing them at predefined intervals throughout time. Uh, because if you go on Google and you look at the forgetting curve, you'll see this big stark uh, uh, decrease of you learn the information and seven days later, you're good, but then 14 days and 21 days, you almost forgot it all. So you have to reintroduce that information so that forgetting curve doesn't take that hard dip. So the most popular way this is done is with a software program called Anki, A-N-K-I. This is extremely popular amongst med students. Um, that's how I learned about it on YouTube. I mean, it's almost, I think, a staple of any med student now in med school in 2023. Um, it's totally free. It's just an electronic um, flashcard system. The reason I really like doing this is because as I was studying the material over six months, let me let me put this in here too. When you buy the leak review book, brand new, um, it gives you a six month access to the online software program, which I will say was pretty good. Um, I would say even very good. Um, it wasn't excellent, but it was very good. Um, the greatest part, you know, I am just a computer guy. Um, I never bought a hard textbook throughout my entire um, uh, career, my entire career in school, uh, throughout my entire doctorate program. Um, everything was just a PDF file. Everything was on the computer. So that's just me. Um, so because of that, when I got onto her online software program, I could easily copy and paste, which you can do that, copy and paste from her book online. Um, it's through Springer House Publishing, I believe is the app, um, but it directly connects you to your access. And then I could paste that into Anki cards and make flashcards out of those. Um, so, you know, something like, uh, what is the preferred antihypertensive for isolated systolic hypertension in a frail elderly adult? would be a uh, calcium channel blocker or a thiazide, like hydrochlorothiazide. Okay, see, I'm, I'm putting myself on stage here, but you would make that as the question and then you can input the answer so that when you review, it gives you the question, you have to actively recall that, okay, calcium channel blocker or a thiazide, and then you hit reveal, you see the answer, and then at the bottom of the cards, it'll say, do I need to do that again immediately? Which means you had no clue what the answer was. Um, did you do good? Which for me, I kind of I kind of made that as like I knew half the answer, or was it easy? Which means you knew it, you got it. I mean, there was no way you were going to get that question wrong. And depending on which, uh, how hard it was for you, the program will automatically space out that card so that you have to review it again based on how difficult it was for you. So easy, the first time is four days. I can remember this off the top of my head because I did so many. Um, and then in four days, when I see that question again, if I get it right again in my brain and it's easy again, it'll be like 21 days. And then easy again is like two months. And then I have cards on here that are going out uh, 1.3 years now because I've reviewed them that many times and they're that solidified in my brain that the program says I don't actually have to review that card now for another year and a half, which of course I will never do. But um, 
that's how that works. I just counted how, I never knew how many total I did. And I reviewed those cards up until like days before my boards, which I took last week. Um, and I got through all of them. And then I finally looked at my entire file and I created 1300 cards. Um, I did not know that. I was not trying to hit a number. I was not trying to, you know, there was no goal. I was just inputting everything I felt like I needed to know. So from the leak book, I created 1300 flashcards that I reviewed constantly for six months as new information came in and as I kept studying and I was just constantly reviewing the stuff I had already reviewed and, and studied. Um, and so that's how I tackled that book. Okay. So for, um, for, let's see, April and May, so two months before my boards, I did not work. And I essentially said in my brain, okay, it was the first two months that I wasn't working and I knew I wasn't going to work. So I said, studying is my full-time job. So I would say I truly was hitting it full-time for probably two months prior. Okay. Um, and that's, you know, almost every day, not, not every day a week, uh, the week, but, you know, probably taking one to two days off, usually at least one day off on the weekend. Right. Um, so after that's how I studied. And then I want to talk about questions. Okay. I'm a big proponent of practice questions. Like I said, just using Anki is essentially questioning yourself. It's essentially making questions. So, um, but test questions geared towards NP boards, I think are essential for passing boards because it's applied knowledge, right? It's now, it's not just knowing that random fact, but it's how are you going to put it into context in a situation? So in total, um, the leak book, the fourth edition comes with about 700 questions or four exams. I tried to do exams as much as possible. In other words, sitting down and answering 150 questions, 175 questions at one time um, to make it as real as possible. Um, I did all of Leek's questions, that which is around 700. I then purchased um, the one-month Board Vitals um, subscription, which gives you 1,500 questions plus one exam. Um, and that actually is, I might add, 150 separate questions. That exam is, uh, is unique and is not a conglomerate of any of those other 1,500. So it's, you know, all in all, it's 1,650 questions. Um, I spaced that out over the month of May, my last month, um, before I knew I was going to be taking my boards shortly thereafter. So that worked out to about 50 questions a day. Um, and so when you break that out over a month, it's not as daunting just doing 50 questions. I also made some flashcards, about 100, 150 flashcards from that of questions I got wrong that I also thought were going to be pertinent to AAMP, FMP. Board Vitals, you've probably, if you've watched these videos before, you've probably heard they're harder. Um, the question style and how it's actually presented, I wouldn't say is harder. It's just there's a larger breadth of knowledge that Board Vitals brings. And so they are, they do throw in a lot of rare diseases. They do throw in um, things that are probably, you know, but, you know, not probably not um, bread and butter or primary care, but um, are good to know, number one. Um, you could do them. It's not that they were like totally outside my scope, like it was emergency medicine or something. It's just that it's just stuff that we're probably not used to in our FMP programs. And, um, but I would say 80 to 90% was spot on. And I think they were good questions. I think it helped me get through how to read questions and get through that. So I did both of those. So now you're talking 1300 review questions myself, 700 from leak, 15, 1650 from board vitals. And then my last week of studying 
prior to taking my test, I took my test on a Friday. So I had all that week where I was essentially in my brain, I was like, I'm done. I can't study anymore. But I kind of freaked out and I talked to a friend and everyone was talking Sarah Michelle. I had looked at her stuff earlier. I didn't love it, um, but she does have a, a monthly question bank subscription. I actually have to cancel it now because I don't need it um, for 40 bucks. So you get 40 bucks for a thousand questions. And like I said, my board vitals was about $150 for 1500 questions. So it's a pretty good deal. Um, so I did all of Sarah Michelle's questions that last week, but I did it in exam styles. So actually she has five, five exams. Uh, three are FNP and then two are the, uh, you know, whatever, uh, advanced, uh, advanced gerontology, primary care nurse practitioner, you know, the AGA, a N P whatever, you know, they don't see kids. However, she says you can still take those tests as an FMP to practice because you're going to get adult questions on your exam too. Obviously it just doesn't have peds questions which is also fine because if you look at your the breakdown of each um, exam's um, demographics of questions, AANP, for instance, is, um, you know, probably 70, close to 60 to 70% adult, right? Broken between elderly, frail elderly, adult, um, and then it'll go adolescent, peds, infants, pregnant, uh, prenatal. And prenatal is like 2%. It's like four questions max that you would ever get on an exam. So it does benefit you to do probably more adult-based questions anyway, because that's the bulk of your exam. Um, so anyway, I did that. And what I did was my last week is I took one exam a day. So that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or I think I started on a Sunday, actually. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then that way, Friday, when I went to the testing center, I felt like in my brain, it would just feel like another exam. Although that probably wasn't, you know, exactly how it worked, but um, that was the way I prepped. So that was my prep all in all. Um, Leak, Board Vitals, Sarah Michelle, just the questions. I didn't do her crash course or anything. And I only used leak for review. Um, I would say I felt adequately prepared, as prepared as I possibly could have been. I did thousands of questions and I spent, you know, months and months studying. So in my brain going into the test, I just told myself there's nothing else I could do, I feel like, to get prepared for this. So, <clears throat> all right. So the actual test. Um, I went with AANP for a couple of very simple reasons. Number one, I didn't want any cultural questions on my exam. You know, AANP doesn't have any of that. ANCC has like 10% cultural HIPAA. If I failed the exam, I didn't want it to be because I didn't know which Medicare paid for what, you know, appliance in someone's house, you know, like or device. So in my mind, I thought, well, I, I would at least want to go out on clinical items. Um, number two, it's less questions. So it's 150 total questions. Only 135 of those actually count. Um, 15 are just test test questions that they're testing on you for future um, examinees. And then three, they had a closer testing site to my house. That's that's literally how I picked. Um, so I went AANP. I did not sign up for both exams. I thought about it towards the end to have a backup as the ANCC because a lot of people in my school were doing that. And I had a mini freak out moment, but I just said, no, I'm going to fully commit and I'm going to do this. A little Dr. Pepper Zero here. Mm, also... This new strawberries and cream, <sighs> amazing. Go go buy it before it's gone. I got the last case, so you probably can't get any. <laughs> um, all right. So how the how'd the test go? 
Well, it was really nerve wracking. <clears throat> um, I'll just be honest. I used a uh, Prometric is the is the testing site uh, uh, company name. You go in. I showed up an hour early because uh, they say to show up at least 30 minutes early, but I was in the parking lot. I was pumped up. I had caffeine on board. I was ready to go. And I was just like, I got to get this done. Like I can't, I'm about to explode. So I went in and she was like, oh yeah, that's fine. Like, I don't care. I'll start you now. And I was like, oh, great. So, um, got, logged in um they give you a key and your id they give you a locker you put all your stuff in then you sign in on a form they uh i had a sweater because you know I, they said it might be cold or hot in there so bring layers they made me dump my sweater they make you pull all your pockets inside out to show you don't have anything in there they make you lift up your pants uh your pant legs just to expose your lower legs and pull down your socks so that you're not hiding anything in your socks. Um, and maybe even take my shoes off. I had I had Crocs on because I was trying to be extremely comfortable. Um, and then they say, okay, um, this is how your exam's gonna go. Essentially, um, are you good? And you say, yeah. So you go into a room and there's gonna be other people there. I had probably I don't know, anywhere from eight to 12 other people in there taking different exams. It's not all FNP exams. Um, they sit you down say, keep all your stuff here. Here's your scrap piece of paper, which had for me had four sides because it was essentially a two sheet booklet. So you had front, back, front, back. So you had four essential total pieces of paper and two pencils, no calculator. Um, and then you do a tutorial, which is 15 minutes. Um, they ask you, are you taking the right exam? You say yes. And then they do a tutorial with a timer. And I mean, you can go through the tutorial. It's only like eight or 10 slides and they're just teaching you how everything works. So you could blaze through that in one minute and start your exam. However, pro tip, which you, if you're studying, you've probably already looked at this, but, um, leak says to use that. 15 minute tutorial time as a time to brain dump. So I started just vigorously putting down all the cranial nerves on my thing. Um, I did my heart murmurs I put on there. I was throwing antibiotics down there for, you know, simple things that I knew. Um, man, I had some, some ranges in there, some lab ranges. Uh, and you know, on a couple questions, I did kind of, for me, just writing something out sometimes can help jog my memory. So I used it like that a couple times as well. So then you go, you say, yep. All right. We're going to hit go. Um, one thing I'll say is that always confused me prior to the exam was that I always heard that you had to flag questions in order to go back to them. And that is not necessarily true. You don't have to flag them. You flag them for your own convenience and your own knowledge to know, okay, these are questions that I flagged. But you can jump around the entire exam, the entire time period. Um, it's not like once you answer a question and you don't flag it and you hit next, you can never see that question again. You can go to any question anytime. Um, I flagged about like, I flagged a lot of questions. It was tough. It, I felt like it was a very fair test. It was very, um, it was very well-rounded. It hit a lot of very, you know, it hit all the topics. I feel like, um, you know, just a lot of standard stuff and a lot of, and then some, you know, uh, more, more peculiar things um, mixed in there, but it, it touched all the age groups, all the body systems, all the different uh, testing domains, which is like um, assessment, diagnosis, plan, evaluation. Um, and so I got through about an hour, you know, about half my time and I was almost done with my test and I had to use my break, you know, just get up, 
use the bathroom. Of course, you know your clock is still running, so you wanna be mindful, you don't wanna take forever, but I did use my break, which, funny enough, I practiced that in my house when I would hit a certain question. I would get up and go to my bathroom and like kind of simulate like a five minute break. Uh, so I know it's probably funny and overkill, but um, that's exactly what I did when I tested. So you gotta, um, you're gonna play like you practice, right? Is what they say. So um, took my break, I came back and I think I had somewhere a little over an hour left and I, and I, so I was a little under halfway through my time and I had, and I only had uh, 20 to 30 questions left. So when I finished the exam, I had, I think, about an hour left. And I made the decision to review every single question again. <laughs> because I had probably 30 to 40 questions flagged. And so I went back to number one. I said I got an hour. I might as well use it. Um, and I just double-checked that I read every question right. You know, all of these questions that are saying, which is not the best therapy for this patient. You know, you don't want to accidentally misread that and you just read best therapy and then you pick something else or what is not indicated or what is um, least likely on your differential diagnosis or what's most likely. You know, you just want to make sure you read what the question is actually asking. And then another, uh, I didn't really realize this until I was testing, but just another maybe strategy for you while you're taking your test is that remember when you're picking an answer <clears throat> and you're saying this is the right answer, you are by default saying that all those three other questions are the wrong answer. So um, what I did on my second pass through is uh, just as, you know, it's just as important to know why you pick the answer and why it's right. Another good way to think about it and kind of flip it is to explain to yourself while you're taking the test why the other answers are wrong or why you would not do that thing. Because a lot of questions are going to say, here's the patient's situation, um, here's their symptoms, um, what is the, uh, this, this was very common, I saw this a lot, was what is the best initial therapy or what is the initial best there initial being or what is the initial best testing initial being the key word in other words three of those answers are probably going to be right and you're probably going to end up doing them at some point in time in that patient's care but what is the first one you would start with what would you prioritize and that was really helpful when I flipped that and I thought why would I not do the other ones initially? Why would these be incorrect at this time in this snapshot in this patient vignette? And so when I did that, I felt much more confident about my answers. Um, I think I only changed, I mean, I only changed probably less than five questions total. Um, Dr. Leak or Leak Review says to, she encourages her students to change no more than three answers. Um, so then I got through them all. I got to all my flag questions and I literally had 30 seconds on the clock. And then I hit, but I said, no, you know what? I'm gonna go out strong. I'm gonna end this test when I say it's over. <laughs> so I hit end test and um, it goes, you know, are you sure you wanna finish this? You can't go back and you say yes. And then it goes, once you hit this button, you can't go back. And I'm like, yes, I know I'm done. And so now my heart's pounding and I'm like, oh my gosh, because I know it tells you, it tells you right away. And so then it goes, can you take this quick survey about your test? <laughs> and you're like, ah! so it asks you these six stupid questions, you know, like, are you strongly agree? Would you recommend AANP to other people? I'm like, who am I going to recommend this to? This is the worst experience of my life. Um, so then you take that you hit all those buttons really quickly because you just want to get it over with. And then you hit done, done, done. And then in this little tiny writing, it said, pass FNP exam, exam over. And I was like, oh, shoot. Like, I think I passed. 
Um, so then I got out of there. I was kind of excited, but I didn't want to like get excited because it really was bad how it appeared on the screen. Like I, I mean, I knew I read the word pass, but I was like, I don't, you know, <clears throat> so I go out and I asked the ladies that were, uh, working there, Hey, do you print something out? And they said, no, but the screen told me, let me go back to that. It did say, we will give you your test results in your email within the hour. Well, they do it right away because it's a computer generated thing. And by the time I got my phone out of my locker and I walked outside the testing center, you have that notification in your email that says pass. Um, the AANPs is a little more hardcore on their like notification. It says like in big red letters, like this does not mean that you really pass we still have to check things and this does not mean you can practice you know so but if you passed you passed so um that is we're already 30 minutes in i'm so sorry guys but that is everything from studying resources to taking the test uh, now quickly i want to just share with you what i've been doing over the past week um, to actually finally become a real life no holds bar NP, um, at least, and I'll say this is in North Carolina, which if you know, we are in the most restrictive category of practice right now. We got healthcare bill act, save act. I don't know what number it is now because it, it dropped out of the Senate last year and they're reinitiating it. So hopefully fingers crossed, everybody in North Carolina can become the next um, independent state um, full practice authority. This would be awesome. But anyway, as of right now, you wait for AANP, your certification board, to show your official results, which for me took two business days. Okay. So two business days, boom, it shows up. You now have your certification. It's in your wallet, your e-wallet. You know, it's your card. It's up there. So now you can go to your board of nursing and you can, in North Carolina, you can uh, submit for your approval to practice. And um, this is essentially just paying some money, And but you do have to have a collaborating physician ready to go. Um, I am already hired somewhere, um, and so I have that in place, but if you do not have that in place yet, you will not be able to continue on this process unless you have a collaborating physician name. You just need their name and their email address because it has its own self lookup, you know, function. So it'll look up their own, their medical license and show that they're active, um, so on and so forth. Um, I also had to do this identification form where I had to actually get a passport photo and print out a piece of paper, you know, old school style and put the passport photo on there, sign it, then take a picture of the entire document and then upload it. It was kind of archaic, but whatever. Um, you send that in, you fill out the forms all online other than that one piece of paper. And then you have, oh, I had to order another official transcript from my school to send to the Board of Nursing. If you haven't done that already, you should do that. And then I and then and then you ask AANP, um, yeah, to AANP, not AARP, <laughs> uh, to send verification to the board of nursing as well, um, and that is completely free. You just click a button through AANP. Um, they do it for free to boards of nursing and I believe colleges. So that took thirty seconds. So that goes through, that goes through. Board of Nursing takes all that, they review all that. That Then they also push out information to the collaborating physician, I believe, and they do a, their own internal physician verification. And then because we are a collaborating state, you also have to get approval from the, um, uh, uh, from the medical association or the, um, board of medicine so you have to get approval from the you know physician board whatever that legal entity body is within your state um and my board of nursing is great i mean they 
they did first half of it in one day and then today they did the second half and then boom they i'm done i got licensed um they send you a notification they give you your card your id um, and now on my board of nursing profile it shows my rn license and my fmp license i'm active it's it i'm done i am done 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 graduated certified and licensed so it is kind of a long road to think about to get you know like prepping so much for boards taking your boards and then going through all this stuff to get licensed um just to finally get your first job <laughs> to do what you've been trained to do so um but it's amazing i mean it's a huge weight lifted off my shoulder um i hope this helps people. Um, I just kind of wanted to go more in the process of how the actual test was and, you know, um, and, and licensing and stuff because I don't hear a lot of these types of videos talk about that stuff. So hopefully that helps just to give you maybe a, even a little bit of an outline of how that'll go and how that'll look. Um, and yeah, anyway, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. If you guys have any questions, you want to know more about studying um, boards, um, any of the stuff we talked about, just leave it in the comments. I'm here now. I'm done with school. So, all right. Thank you.